James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today is August 7th, 2023, 4.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. We've just had another X flare, ladies and gentlemen. An X 1.5 solar flare has originated and caused an R3 strong radio blackout. It originated from Sunspot Region AR3386. Now you did hear that correctly. Even though AR3386 has gone basically around the limb, it has expelled a huge X flare, probably much stronger than the 1.5 being reported. And we saw activity at the same time, a large M flare out of AR3387. You'll be able to see that on GOES-16 Ultraviolet Imager. Here is the R3 radio warning blackout. We're still in a polar cap absorption event, ladies and gentlemen. We will see a strong M flare from AR3387 right before the X flare occurs. Again, probably much stronger than the 1.5 being reported. Definitely hit our GOES satellites, as you will see. Let's go find out what happened. All right, this was a fairly long duration X flare event, an X 1.5. You will recall that this was a larger event. It looks like an X 1.6, but very close to each other, although this one was much longer term. Now, AR3386 is further around the limb, but obviously it still struck our GOES X ray flux and our GOES satellite that only orbits around Earth at about 150 miles. Now, remember, we're 93 million miles away from the sun. So if that satellite got hit and we saw X-ray absorption, which we will show you soon, Earth will be hit, period. Now, the most important thing is the one, two, three, three M flares that built up to this all from AR3387, which is much more Earth-facing than 86, which has gone around the limb already. It's occurring exactly like we said it would as these sunspots get towards facing the gas giants. They're becoming more complex and flaring with large M and X flares. Soon we will be in between the gas giants and the sun, as I will soon show you. Over to our Go Solar Ultraviolet Imager 195 Angstroms, Go 16. Let's take a quick look here. You'll see 87 pop off right here. There it goes right there. And then right after that, the X flare around the limb from 86. 87 and then 86. One and then the other. Remember, 87 popped off three times before 8.6 finally blew its top. 8.7 is becoming more complex as it faces the gas giants, as we will soon see. Now this is a freak show. Over to the D-Region Absorption Prediction Center, all the gamma rays and X-rays hitting us. You can see that we were still in a polar absorption event here just a few hours ago at 13.27. Minus 7 hours, 6.30 this morning here essentially. Again, polar event. On and off. We seem to have lost the polar event. But this X flare and those M flares might bring it back. I've been watching the proton. And here we go. There's the first M flare. Really hit the west coast there. And look at the size of this flare, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see also how long it lasted. Unbelievable. Into the X range here. Off the charts. Charts in at 35 decibels. The frequencies affected are very high. It started at, I mean, I guess it's going to, the first M flare, and I guess this is the start of the X flare at about 20, 20, it completely blows up 
This is 2120. That's an hour in X flare territory. And we're leaving. The chart ends at 2138. Only about four minutes ago. And we're still seeing that kind of hit from this flare. Unbelievable. What are causing these flares? Well, I think it's all the gas giants lined up in a little area of our solar system that we happen to be heading into. Now, here we are again, though, with radiation hitting our satellites on the night side of Earth. Same exact location, the 5, 530 position. This is pretty intense activity here. Remember, the Earth is orbiting at just under 67,000 miles an hour. There's always a sun-facing side, but it's always different. And this is the night-facing side. It's spinning counterclockwise, 360 degrees a day. And it's also coming right at you, being pulled by the sun away from the Big Bang at 544,000 miles an hour. This is all per mainstream science, not me. All right, over to the HMI intensogram so we can see these sunspots. 3386 is really not visible around the limb. Still going to have an Earth component. 3387 is the one that popped out those three M flares prior to the X explosion on AR3386. And we also have seven more named sunspots here coming around to soon face the gas giants. As they do, they become more complex and tend to shoot out M and X flares thus far. I wanted to show you guys how hard of a hit that was on our magnetosphere or our atmosphere. These are the magnetometers and we lost it. A K6, negative 400, just about took out the shield completely off just the initial stages of that X flare. Here we are again. Uh, X 1.63 is what this says, and this says X 1.4. This is NOAA, the other was NASA, so there's always some difference. What you can't see up here is how long lasting this was, but it was a much longer lasting X flare as we saw on GOES X ray flux. It is very scary that our magnetometer dropped that far from just the initial phases of that X flare that happened around the sun. It was probably a much stronger X flare and we will see if we can see that on core. But let's first take a look at all the planets that we're about to line up with, including Saturn. We're already geomagnetically connected to Venus, Saturn, Pluto, Neptune, and Eris. As we move uh, further into the month, we're gonna connect to Mercury and then Uranus. I don't know why we're not connecting to Jupiter before Uranus, but that's what they say. Let's take a look at what's going to happen. We're moving in front of the first gas giant now, Saturn, and you can see the moon always plays a big part. It's behind or in front, and these two planets, Mercury and Venus, are also in between the Sun and Earth, with the four gas giants lined up here, all in less than a quarter of the solar system. Mars is opposing, which is even worse. As we move on, you'll see that we pick up Mercury right here. This gets really ugly when the moon comes back. This day right here, August 30th, could be nasty. We haven't picked up anything but Mercury additionally. So Pluto, Saturn, Mercury, Venus. Of course, the moon's playing a big part. and The sun's playing the biggest part with Mars opposing. And then as we move into September, we actually get a geomagnetic connection to Uranus. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a very dangerous 100 days. Please expect an uptick, which we've already seen in volcanic activity, and which we haven't seen in earthquake activity. All right, taking a look at core, we definitely see the start of this event here. There are some of the M flares out of 3387. Very strong. We're getting into that time right now. That may or may not be the initial M flare. And at the end of this, there's a flare from something on the south that I didn't notice. We're going to see 
all of a sudden it hits and explodes. That's that X flare coming out. And then it nails the camera and shuts the camera down. Bang, folks. Bang. So, ladies and gentlemen, another X flare inbound, even though it was around the limb. Hopefully, y'all remember the time that they said just our geomagnetic connection to the sun let us enjoy a X flare on the opposite side of the sun. That was interesting. With that said, God bless each and every one of you guys. Please share, subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.